All right. It's twice. All right, it's time. 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 Hello. We're gonna make this as quickly as possible. Welcome in chat. Holy fucking shit. We have got juice. We have got content for the first time in a very, 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 very long time. About to pass out, but happy seven months flats. Oh, here we fucking go. Um, all right, there's so much stuff we have to talk about today because, uh, not only, not only is this the, the Kirko announcement, there's more, um, and I'm just trying to see if it, okay, I'll mute alerts for a little bit. I'm just trying to see, uh, what order I should go in because I think there's, I think there's a pretty good amount of shit today. Um, oh, the blog post is out. It looks like boom. Hold on, let me pull that out as well. Oh, man. Oh, the juice is flowing, chat. Like, I wouldn't fuck with you like this. I really wouldn't. Um, all right. Let's start from the top, shall we? Do I... Let's start with the trailer. Let's start with the trailer, chat. Let's fucking go. Let's start with the trailer. So, for those who haven't seen... Oh, another one! Wait, two... Wait, there's a second one! There's a second one! There's a second one that just dropped! Okay, we gotta go fast, chat. There's a second one now that just dropped. I'm not fucking with you. There's a second one. The first one was 35 minutes ago, and now there's a second one. So first, let's watch the first one, okay? Kiriko, gameplay hero trailer. Let's start. We're gonna watch this one, then we're gonna watch the next one, and then I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna talk about this one, okay? Let's go. For generations. My family has served and protected our city by following traditional paths. Me? <laughs> I made my own. Some of the old, some of the new. Okitsune sama, minna wo michibite. Much better. I run with blades all the time. Oh. Come on, Shimaba. Take it! Take all of it! Take all of it! Clapping is allowed, chat. Spam it up. Only clapping is allowed. Holy shit, dude. That, I, dude, I love her. I love her. I, I did. I have never seen a character that is probably going to, like, I've never looked at something and went, wow, that's probably going to make a lot of fucking money that I have looking at Kiriko. All right, chat. Uh, this is going to throw my rhythm off. I had a little bit of a rhythm, but there's actually a second trailer that just dropped. Uh, so let's watch it right now. We're in this together, all of us. Let's get this done. Let's go smash some heads. Keep an eye on this show. Kiriko, free instant unlock for Overwatch 1 players. It's all connected. Impressive. Ooh. 
world could always use more heroes. This is not the end. Holy shit. It's finally happening. It's finally happening. There's also this very, very, very extensive blog post that came out, um, which appears to be detailing a lot of the questions that people have kind of had. Y'all wanted content? Here's content. <laughs> Oh man, they listened to your tweet about marketing. Oh yes, hold on, hold on. Let me let me show you all this really quick. Uh, chat. I mean, for those who don't know, I have of course the the magic powers that uh, just make things appear at any time. Uh, of course. Uh, so clearly, uh, yesterday Blizzard saw that I made this tweet talking about Shrek Rave. Uh, and decided to throw together the whole fucking shebang of the trailers, the blog posts, everything. They 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 chopped right in gear. So, uh, good job. I'm glad they. I'm glad that I put that tweet out. I, and and don't, prime subs are, are are a great way to show that you're you're thankful for it. Overwatch season one is right around the corner. Take a take a closer look at what you can expect from the seasons one, including new heroes, maps, and new game modes, and new rewards to earn. Season one kicks off October fourth. Free to play for everyone okay so a quick little rundown of what, what this graphic looks like and what, what's going on on it uh everyone will unlock uh no matter what sojourn and junker queen at the launch of overwatch uh, 2 uh kiriko will be unlocked for overwatch 1 players so if you own overwatch 1 you'll get kiriko uh in case that for people that probably don't know what that means uh, if you don't over Overwatch 1, uh, it seems you're not going to get Kiriko right away. Uh, or at least for free. Like, we'll have to look more into the whole system. But that's basically the expanse of it. And most people here probably own Overwatch 1. Um, so, you're good. 5v5, 6 new maps. Uh, push is added. Crossplay and cross-progression. Uh, so, if you're somebody who's on console and is going to PC... Uh, your stuff will carry over. Um, competitive mode 2.0. Uh, limited time event. Wait, what? Limited time event. Um, oh, so October 25th through November 8th, there's going to be a new event, the Junkenstein's Revenge, Wrath of the Bride. Um, that uh, is like a PvE probably event, I think, of some sort, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, it sounds like it, but... It sounds like it's another Junkard sign uh, revenge. Um, Overwatch one content gets all the original thirty-two heroes, uh, classic maps and modes, and okay, battle pass. So there's been a lot of talk about the battle pass stuff. So hopefully we can answer all like go through all the questions today. Uh, all new hero Kiriko. So I'm guessing this is the paid battle pass. Uh, all new hero Kiriko. Two epic skins, two souvenirs, one weapon charm. Wait, actually. Play the game earn. Oh no, this is the free. This is the free battle pass. No, this is the free battle pass. So okay, this is the paid one. Okay, so this is the free battle pass. So all new hero Kiriko, two epic skins, two souvenirs, one weapon charm, and fifteen additional rewards for the free battle pass. Uh, most games of free battle pass is pretty terrible, so that's not bad. Uh, and then there's the premium, which is Kiriko instant unlock, season twenty or twenty percent season XP boost, all new mythic skin. So the mythic skin is inside the battle pass, the Genji one. So uh, realistically, that's kind of the value of the whole battle pass, like on its own. Most people thought the mythic skins were going to be like 40, 50 bucks minimum. Uh, if they're included in the battle pass, then that's 10 bucks. So, uh, 
five legendary skins, one epic skin, 56 additional rewards. And then I believe I'm covering this little last part, so really quick. Uh, complete weekly challenges to earn Overwatch coins. New bundles weekly in the in-game store. So, chat, there's going to be new uh, weeklies and daily challenges in Overwatch 2, uh, which is kind of kind of lit. Kiriko's kit. Project protection of Suzu. Upon impact, allies in the area become briefly invulnerable and are cleansed of most negative effects. So, for those who saw in the trailer, that is this ability. Hold on. Where is it? It's this one. This ability right here. Um, I would be lying to you if I said I didn't think it was a little strong. Um, however, though, it's not nearly as strong as, like some other abilities that in the game that you would think of like immortality field um because it's much shorter and it's much harder to hit um not the actual mechanical part but like the timing it's not as forgiving um actually if anything that's probably the part of her kit that is like not the scariest if that makes sense um God, they full they fully le leaned into this. This is gonna. I've I never looked at something before and been like, this is gonna make so much goddamn money. So her projectile, which is like her her damage, um, is her kunai. So basically, she's got like kunais around her fingers, uh, and so she has like she's like holding in one hand her healing cards, and the other is the kunai, and it's oh, it's so sick. Um, healing the healing thing is basically. She throws out uh, talismans. Um, you kind of see it earlier on. Uh, this is her healing effect right here. Uh, and it's it's so cool how it works. So you see how there's blue here and there's yellow. Uh, the blue is when you don't have a target. Uh, yellow is when you have a target. So um, technically they have unlimited range. I tested it. Um, but obviously, as you can see, there's a travel time. So you see how there's a travel time to get to the Genji when he dashes? There's a travel time, so the further you are away, the harder it is to get there. Um, but it's like, she can just keep doing it, you know? How's the ammo on healing? I actually, I might be misremembering this, but she doesn't have to reload her healing. She just can go... But it's not, like, it's genuinely not that... I would actually say, like, I, I don't even know if she's, like, that strong... Um, healing wise, like she's okay, she's good. Um, but I think the rest of her kit is where her power is, not exactly, um, uh, not exactly the healing aspect. Um, but it's 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 fun. Like it's I, I would actually say like the healing is probably the least fun part of her kit, if that makes sense. So I'll show you one more time what it looks like the the speed. Look at how fast it takes to travel. So if you're at range, it's a pretty it's a pretty good pretty good jump. Um, swift step. Okay, now now we're getting into the, the realm of eh, you know. So swift step is uh, basically guardian angel on literal steroids. Uh, she can t she can TP to any enemy that's in her range, uh, even through walls. So like. You know, like, let's say you're in some trouble and you see a teammate on the other side of a wall. You can just go and just whoop, right through the wall and go to your teammate. Uh, now, it's not like Guardian Angel where you can kind of, like, fly past them if you hold, like, space and stuff. You always, like, teleport behind them or something like that. Um, so you actually can end up fucking yourself really badly if you're not smart with it. I fucked it up, like, the few times I got to try it. Uh, in like sh like pressured situations, um, but I will say she does have crazy escape ability. Now I don't even know why she needs. Well, I mean I, I know why she needs it, but uh, basically, if your name is ML Seven, remember back here on this kunai, her her damage. Uh, so headshots, you know, when she throws her kunai, her headshots do. 3x damage. 
So headshots normally do 2x damage, I think, or in like some places is like 2x and then some are like 1.5 or whatever. She does 3x. So if you nail headshots, she goes, think, think, it's insane. But her, if you don't nail headshots, she's weak as shit. Like, genuinely. Like, it, if you don't nail the headshots, you don't you don't do shit for damage. But if you land headshots, holy fuck, she's insane. I'll say it was very difficult. I think even ML kind of struggled a little bit um, with consistently landing headshots. So I want to say it seems like the character is going to be extremely high skill ceiling, um, which is unfucking believable. What's the pattern? Single shot. It was. It's a single shot. Kind of how, like, Zen shoots, but, like, not nearly as fast. Like, you can't, like, spam. Well, actually, no. I'd say it's about on par with Zen. Maybe. I I'd say it's, like, somewhat on par with Zen. Um, But really, genuinely, what her actual broken ability is, is her ultimate. Her ultimate is... <sighs> okay, so let's read it to you. Someone a fox spirit that rushes forward, accelerating the movement, attack speed, and cooldowns of allies, allies that follow her path. So basically, if you play WoW or whatnot, it's like haste. So your attack speed is up. Uh, I actually, so I played, I and you should ask M ML about this. Me and ML played a, a couple games. We were on the same team when we were doing the testing. And we had a fight. I don't remember who it was against, but uh, we ulted, uh, Kiriko ulted in and I played Ryan. And because your attack speeds increase, so Ryan normally swings like whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. It was literally, whoosh, 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 whoosh. Dude, I just, I fucking melted the whole team. Like, it was like, it was an instant 4K. Like, I'm not joking. Like, it was like, boop, gone. <laughs> it's just like, I was like, oh my God. Like, like, unironic machine gun rhyme. It was the funnest shit you've ever seen. And that's why, like, it's a little bit dangerous to, like, talk about, you know, how broken some of the abilities sound on paper. Like, her, like, her like immortality per se, right? Genuinely, the other shit honestly sounds is actually more busted. Uh, but it's and this is the most important part. So much fun, and I'm not even I'm not even good, I'm not even I wasn't even good at her. I actually I actually didn't even get to play her that much because I wanted to give like all the support players a chance, you know. So I ended up playing like a lot of tank through it, and I actually got a good chance to like f experience what tank would be like with. Kiriko and uh, uh, you know I actually still don't know if I saw this right or not but I'm pretty sure I shattered somebody and they instantly stood up uh, when they got hit by her ability um, I'm not sure if I was just fucking dazed because after it was a long day uh, but I didn't get to test it again so uh, there's a there is a chance um, that her ability also cancels stuns um, so, yeah, take that how you will, I guess. But I'm not, honestly, I'm not a thousand percent sure on that. I'm just kind of telling you uh, what I'm what I'm thinking with. What did she pair best with? Uh, I mean, we didn't have a whole lot of time, but, like, Lucio and Bap seemed pretty good. Um, but regardless, it, there's gonna it's going to take way more time. Like, we didn't, we were just playing whatever we could play to, like, figure out what, what, what would sound good. All right, let's go to the important thing. Let's go to this, this Battle Pass shop. Uh, blog. Let's. So this thing is fucking long, chat. This is a long ass blog, and a bunch of questions and answers and stuff. So, a lot of people uh, recently have been very upset with like the leaks and talking about like heroes behind the battle pass and whatnot. Um, and I, I think this is going to provide some answers. At least I think. All right. Overwatch Two explained. Battle pass shop hero unlocks and more. Overwatch 2 releases on October 4th and will usher in a new era for the game. The changes we're making will support our goals to deliver more content to the game more regularly. Uh, okay, like, I'm just going to say it, not to be cynical at the beginning, um, but a lot of people's argument recently about against the Battle Pass system, which, to be fair, I actually do kind of disagree with the whole putting heroes behind the Battle Pass thing. I'm not actually a fan of it. I want to say that now, now that I can kind of unlock and talk about a lot of stuff. I actually am not a huge fan of it, but as long as it's a fair way to get it, like it's not too terrible, then like f compromise, sure. Um, but a lot of people cite old Overwatch and are like, well, on Overwatch, I paid $40 and I had free content for six years. Well, that's why our game fell apart. So let's, you know, I, 
I'm hoping to God that this gives us content for years to come and we never go back, and I'm so fucking excited. All will help more players more than ever experience in the Overwatch universe. Moving to free-to-play in Overwatch 2 together with enabling cross-platform. Um, so, cross-platform is already enabled. I think this means, like, cross-progression slash uh, cross-platform when the game is actually healthy and alive. Um, with cross-progression means anyone can access the game and join their friends for free. Which are mostly, which we are incredibly excited about. This is a big part, is genuinely playing with your friends. I've even had, like, my IRL friends start hitting me up and be like, Hey, like, I heard Overwatch 2 is coming back out soon. Like, I'm excited to play it. Uh, and I'm not going to lie. My friends are just random gamers. They wouldn't be voting it into me. So people are excited. At the same time, we know it's a big transition that involves many changes. One of our goals is to make sure our games provide plenty of entertainment, fun, and expression no matter how much you spend. Even if you choose to spend nothing at all. So let's read that again. One of our goals is to make sure our game provides plenty of entertainment, fun, and expression. No matter how much you spend, even if you choose to spend nothing at all. Is that true? When Overwatch 2 launches, we'll be delivering more in one drop than we've delivered since the original game launched in 2016. This includes three new heroes, which will be available immediately to returning Overwatch players who log in during Season 1 or Season 2. So as long as you have Overwatch 1, period, then you get... They admitted to doing nothing. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. Um, <laughs> basically, you're going to get Kiriko, uh, which is good because uh, genuinely, okay, I give support, pa support players a lot of shit. Um, I didn't like the way support was getting handled in beta 2 um, because I felt like the dev team was really pandering to support players to like give them something because they hadn't gotten any of the new stuff. And I was against it because I don't think you should just randomly change or buff things just to do it so you give them something new. Now you guys will finally get some actual good new content, new character, and some shit to play. So I'm excited for you because this is the way it's supposed to be done. So I'm glad you guys are getting it because it's been like 800 days since support players got a new character. So you know what? I'm glad. I'm happy for you. Um, now I understand you have many questions on how we model our live service to work. So here we are to answer them. Overwatch 2 is shifting to a seasonal model where we plan to deliver new content to the game every nine weeks. Every nine weeks we get new content. That is an extremely small window. Smaller than Valorant or Apex. Um, now granted, that doesn't mean we're getting a new hero every season. Uh, we're getting a new hero every other season. Uh, but yeah, except I think season one and two. Uh, there's new heroes season one, new he hero season two, and then I think it goes back to, uh, like maps and stuff like that and like alternating. Uh, okay. Each season will feature a lot to explore, new experiences and way to play, and will typically bring either a hero or a new map alternating each season. So there it is, like what I was just saying. So you'll either get a new hero or a new map every nine weeks. That's huge. That's a pretty quick content schedule um and that means that things will constantly be shaking up and even if you know things aren't the best shape we should never be in another chain or another case where we have goats um or we have um or we have what's it called uh like double shield each season will have a new battle pass each one with a unique theme and up to 80 plus unlockable tiers of cosmetics we also plan to start we also plan on using the start of each session or sorry each season to make our most of our hero balance changes so that everything always feels fresh and distinct uh this part's interesting um because i know that and this was something that was talked about um at the creator summit uh and has been feedback from many members of the community myself included for a long time um whether publicly or behind the scenes um because I, I do a lot of both, um, is seasons in Overwatch mean nothing right now. And so I joke about it all the time, like season 36 of Overwatch, like, oh, what's different than season 35? Uh, Emon makes this joke, the number changed. That seems to be, they're trying to change that. They want everything, every season to have its own distinct feeling. So like the meta will reflect that in the game, the battle pass will reflect that, the characters, like the skins, all that stuff. So like, 
Um, I think it's, I hope it says in here, but season one, okay, it does. Season one is like a cyberpunk theme, right? So all the hero, all the unlocks, all the skins and stuff like that through the battle pass are all going to be cyberpunk themed. And every season will have its own themes, which is like kind of lit. Uh, with the seasonal mile, model, loot boxes are going away in Overwatch 2. Good loot boxes were kind of a shit system anyways. It's not like it's good. It doesn't, it's not monetized nearly as well as like Apex. And to be honest with you, people just hoard coins. I think fucking Emong yesterday had over like 200 something thousand. It was still going up last time I saw. And our new in-game shop will allow you to purchase exactly what you want with our new virtual currency, Overwatch coins. What you see is what you're going to get. The shop will offer featured cosmetic items every week for all players. And in season one, many of these cosmetics will follow a cyberpunk theme. Future seasons will have different themes for cosmetics. Um, I think this is fine to say, uh, I hope it is, but, uh, it seems that the shop items are going to be like, they want them to be like kind of unique, I guess. Um, and so that like, you know, like in a lot of games, like exclusivity is like a big deal. Like, you know, like you have skins that not many people that people have. I think they want it. They want to replicate that somehow. I, I hope that's, I think that's, I think that's like what it was kind of like the idea. Um, you know, I think it's pretty much the idea for the shop. Um, but I mean, like the battle pass is the chunky part of the content and is like prob is like the most valuable from what it seems. Uh, additionally, the feature, the shop will feature a just for you section with personalized offers based on what you prefer to play and equip in game as well as rotating bundles. So, uh, this sounds like kind of like how Valorant does it. Um, I don't think it's like the same way. It's not like the, the night market or whatever that pops up where like things are on sale. I don't know if that'll actually like be a thing. Maybe, um, I have no clue, but like having things like catered to you every week, it sounds like you'll have your own specialized offers, uh, every week that'll be different from other people's and it will be obviously like unique as it goes forward. Uh, this is our chance to feature items that regularly for, sorry, to feature different items regularly and to celebrate special occasions and moments. Oh, oh shit. So, like, that probably means, like, you know, like events, like Halloween and stuff like that. Uh, and on our first, first few seasons, the Just For You shop and rotating bundles will feature items from the original Overwatch to allow players to catch up if they need. Okay, that's a little bit disappointing, but fair. The Battle Pass is free for everyone. And you choose to upgrade to the premium battle pass in the shop to unlock the premium rewards. Let's dive into how that will all work. Introducing the season one battle pass. Okay, I'm un I'm unchained, full opinions, with all the info. Let's go. We'll use specific examples from our season one battle pass to explain how battle passes will work. Our goal is to make the game feel fair, enjoyable, and rewarding whether you choose to spend money on the premium battle pass or not. Our team has worked hard to carefully craft not only the cosmetics you expect, but brand new cosmetic types for the Overwatch universe like name cards, charms, and souvenirs. And some of these rewards will be available for, to everyone through the free track of the battle pass. If the season features a new hero, they will be earnable through the free battle pass track. Um, can we like, I don't know, can I zoom in on this maybe? Whoops. So here's like a look of like what the free battle pass will look like. So like at 51, you'll get something. 55, you'll get Kiriko. 58, you'll get something. And then obviously the, the the paid rewards or the premium ones will be locked through here. 55 is high though. Uh, I won't lie. 55 is kind of high. So let's hear more. Let's see if there's more to it. Maybe, you know, maybe it, it makes sense. Uh, in season one, everyone who logs into play will receive Junker Queen and Sojourn automatically, whether they're new players or returning. Players who own the original Overwatch will also receive Kiriko through their Founders Pack so the Founders Pack you get for owning Overwatch 1, um, that's not the Watchpoint Pack, I believe. So the, the Founders Pack is when we got, like, the Clown Sombra and the Army Doomfist. So as long as you own Overwatch 1, it's not going to matter. You will get Kiriko on release. Don't worry. 
which needs to be redeemed by logging in before the end of Season 2. As long as you, I guess, log in before the end of Season 2. Fair enough. Season 1's Battle Pass will feature the following unlockable free rewards in 20 tiers spread throughout the 80-plus total tiers. The newest support hero, Kiriko. Two epic skins, a weapon charm, two souvenirs, one highlight intro, 14 additional items, emotes, victory poses, name cards, sprays, player icons, etc., and prestige tier titles. Now, this sounds fun to me as a streamer who plays a lot. Eight earnable titles only after completing the entire pass. So if you complete the pass uh, already in the season, so instead of just having nothing else to do, you can fucking circle the globe on that bitch and just keep going. Because if you play an absolute fuck ton, like your like your emongs out there, you can end up getting tons of prestige titles that like nobody will ever get, just from being a hard grinder. That kind of that rewards those really really hard grinders without penalizing the players who don't play that much for not having those items. If that makes sense. Uh, each one season one premium battle pass. Okay, so let's hear this. Each season will have a premium battle pass track for players who want to earn even more rewards. The Premium Battle Pass will feature 60 additional, for a total of 80, tiers to unlock, including our first ever Mythic Tier skin. I, I, need that. I don't think you guys understand how important that is. And how many other Premium Cosmetic items. If the season features a new hero, purchasing the Premium Battle Pass will also grant instant access to the hero, in addition to a season-long Battle Pass experience boost, wait, season-long Battle Pass experience boost, and additional cosmetic rewards. Season 1's premium track includes instant access to Kiriko for players, uh, for new players, and contains over 60 cosmetics to unlock, including six all new legendary skins and all new Cyber Demon Genji Mythic skin. Uh, let's. I want to finish this before I give you much of an opinion. We're excited. Uh, we're especially excited about the Mythic skins and an entirely new tier of skins in Overwatch 2. These skins go beyond our existing legendary skins for our first ever mythic skins. We've built Genji a highly customizable cyber demon skin that layer features layers that you can mix and match, each containing different color schemes and patterns. We're planning on including a new mythic skin in every season's battle pass. In total, Season 1's premium battle pass includes, in addition to all the free rewards above, the following unlockable rewards. Immediate, immediate access to Kiriko. 20% battle uh, pass boost. One mythic skin. Five legendary skins and one epic skin. Three play of the game intros. Four weapon charms. Three emotes. Three souvenirs. Six poses. Six name cards. And 30 plus additional cosmetic rewards. The premium battle pass will cost 1,000 Overwatch coins, equivalent of $10 USD. Those coins can be purchased directly or also earned over time by completing weekly challenges. Watchpoint pack owners will automatically see, receive Season 1's Premium Battle Pass. We knew that before. So here's the big one. The Premium Battle Pass will cost 1,000 Overwatch coins. Those coins can be purchased directly or earned over time by completing weekly challenges. Battle Pass crew progression. Everyone's progression through the Battle Pass simply by playing the game as well as completing daily and weekly challenges which offer significant XP. You can also progress your battle passes faster by grouping up to a for a 20% XP boost on match XP. If you decide later in the season to acquire the premium battle pass, all previously earned premium tiers will unlock at that time. Standard. Those of you who complete the season's battle pass can continue to progress through a prestige tiers. Prestige rewards take longer to unlock, but in Season 1, they reward 8 total unique hero titles you can equip on your name cards. You'll only be able to earn specific tier titles, or sorry, prestige tier titles during the season they are available. For example, you cannot earn Season 1 titles during Season 2. Okay, I need to take a drink of water. That's a lot. All right. Full thoughts and opinions. Uh, number one, I don't totally agree with putting heroes behind the battle pass. Uh, that is definitely a little bit tough, um, but I understand why they're doing it. Um, 
they're making it so that you want to buy the battle pass. They're, they want to put everything in the battle pass. Um, is it the best idea for the game? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't think it's going to actually hurt it uh, in any way, shape, or form. I think that a lot of the outrage and people like being mad is genuinely warranted. Uh, however, though, people think it's going to be the end of Overwatch, I think is completely just skewed. Um, reason being, uh, well, I mean, there's a few reasons being one, they have it available. So you will unlock it just maybe not right away. Uh, and many games have done that in the past and it's been okay. Uh, if you are someone that needs to have it right away, there is multiple forms of being able to get it. So first one, uh, is through the free battle pass and you can get it through daily and weekly challenges and getting XP boost by playing with friends and also uh, match XP slash like the weeklies and dailies, you're going to be able to to unlock it. Um, I don't know if it really is said it in here. I'm not sure if it's really even said in here. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised it's not. Uh, so I hope we're not going to, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually really surprised. Um, but you get like coins for doing the dailies and the weeklies. So if you do all your dailies and weeklies, like all the time, you can get the battle passes, you know, and you're, it's not like you're going to have to do it every season because it's every other season. They said it. Wait, where, wait, where, where? Where is it? That part. Because you read it. Okay. I, I listen. I've read a lot this morning. It's six a.m. My brain's not totally all there. Um, under Genji skin. Uh, directly or earned over time by completing weekly challenges. Oh, okay, it's kind of inferred here. Um, I wish it actually came out and said it. Um, but basically. So by completing dailies and weeklies, you get coins, and those coins can be used to buy the battle pass, and you don't have to buy it every season. Like, in seasons that it's a um, a map, right? It was on the graphics on Twitter, was it? Uh, hold on, for safety, because Twitter is sometimes scary. Um... Oh, okay, it is here actually. Sorry. Bottom right hand corner. Uh complete weeklies and dailies to earn coins. Alright. I wish that actually I, I actually think that they probably should have explained this a little bit better. So basically, um every season you don't have to buy the battle pass because every other season's a map, right? So I think season one and two is gonna be heroes, but after that it's like map hero, map hero, map hero, whatever. So, like, you can spend the whole maps battle pass just building up coins to then spend on the next battle pass, you know? So, there is a lot of ways to end up earning it, you know, in the long run. That's why I think that it was a little, it's a little, it wasn't, like, totally fair to, like, jump at it right away. Um... Granted, I had a better idea than people had, so like I, I'm not gonna fault people for being upset. Uh, it was more of like the levels of people that were upset that kind of annoyed me because, like, genuinely, there was this was never something that was gonna like destroy the whole game, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, this is I'm excited for this battle pass because not only like is all the rewards in it, but here's the big one: the mythic skin. So those who didn't really catch it, the Mythic skin is a customizable skin. It's the first one of its kind. We've never had a customizable skin in Overwatch before. Ever. Like, the, so, I don't know how much is really said here, but like, you saw it from the trailer, like the, the other one. But, uh, you can see, look at his face, like, his face changes, his colors change, all of this shit changes, like, it, look at, he has a different face mask, it opens up, 
different colors. Uh, let me see. Is there another one? There's a lot of there's a lot of shit in here. It's actually fucking insane. Um, it's actually unbelievable. So, chat, listen, okay. I kind of have to take a poop. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I, I didn't take my morning poop this morning, and things are things are creeping up kind of quick. Uh, <laughs> so, point being, battle pass his or heroes behind the the uh uh. Heroes behind the battle pass, not a massive W, but it's a, I'm okay with the um, compromise as long as um, it doesn't take too, too long and it's doable and it's like you can get it and it's not that tough and it doesn't cause competitive problems. Uh, otherwise, we're pretty good. Otherwise, we're pretty good. All right, chat, listen to me. I need you to give me five minutes. I got to go to the bathroom. I'm dying. Cool. All right. Let's finish this off. So, basically, overall ruling for the battle pass, um, in my genuine opinion, <laughs> sub guru. My genuine opinion on the battle pass is it's not perfect. Um, however, there seems to be enough ways money gram okay all right you you trigger me i'm gonna i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna flip you understand why we failed in overwatch one right because the game wasn't worth it profitably wise like as everyone in the entire universe knows nobody likes to work for free it's just not good that's why we got content every three fucking months we got like four fucking skins Going to free-to-play, the whole idea was to get more people to play the game, more eyes on the game, faster queue times, more player base, more people watch content, more people watch Overwatch League, all these things that people would genuinely enjoy will get to live. And Overwatch will make more content because it'll be making more money. That's just genuinely how it works. That's why games like Candy Crush get fucking pumped content because those games are like money farms. Right, so for people that don't want to spend money, you absolutely can get away without not without paying money. This system genuinely is probably one of the most fair systems I've seen. If you buy the battle pass, if you buy the battle pass, you're getting the biggest skin in the game, the boost, the the XP boost, so you can get the prestige tiers if you're a big grinder. Way more skins than you got in normal Overwatch One during the events because it's every nine weeks instead of every three months. Pay to win is why people are scared of this. How is it pay to win? Actually, you know what? I think it's going to come in down here, but it, the hero, the new heroes are locked for two weeks and before ranked. So I don't think it's, I don't think I've gotten even that far yet, but spoiler alert, when Kiriko comes out or any character comes out, it's going to be two weeks until it's unlocked and ranked. If you don't grind the game and you don't play it that much, then, like, I'm not really sure, you know, like, what to tell you. Uh, there is not really any games out there that just hand you all that shit for free, you know? Pay to win implies that you get an advantage. Right, but you don't get an advantage. The only difference is you don't have to put in as much time, I guess. Um, you can absolutely, this, this model is very fair on being able to get it for free. Is it perfect? No. I still agree with you that I think that having the hero behind the battle pass is not the best. Um, but in terms of fairness, this is absolutely probably the best battle pass on the market for any free-to-play game. That's my genuine opinion. This is probably the best battle pass of any game. Period. So. Um, anyways. Uh, let's go back into it. So I think this probably talks about it a little bit more. New heroes. With the launch of Overwatch 2, our roster will expand to 35 heroes as Sojourn, Junker Queen, and Kiriko join the fight. 
as we build new heroes and balance the existing cast for new 5v5 experience, we've shifted our hero design approach to allow you to have an impact on your matches with a range of different heroes and strategies. This means reducing the presence of hard counters to heroes. For example, in the original Overwatch, especially at higher skill levels, the strongest way to shut down an enemy tracer diving your, into your supports line was a swap order to Cassidy. Oh, break! Um, sorry. Whew. If that Cassidy player was effective enough, the tracer could even feel a need to switch themselves to avoid that hard counter. While in Overwatch 2, heroes will have their own clear strengths and weaknesses, some heroes will be far will be more effective against others. And some heroes are more effective than against others. We believe our gameplay better and is more fun with fewer hard counters and a broader range of effective hero picks. This is basically the ideology that they're trying to make every hero somewhat viable versus each other. And that just by because like you load up a game of Overwatch and you have a Mercy on your team, it's GG. A further benefit is having your personal favorite hero be viable more often. That philosophy will be guiding us moving forward. That's kind of like the whole hero swaps thing. It's like people end up playing like two or three heroes like for all of Overwatch. That's what they enjoy. And they want to play their the heroes they like. So this ideology is to make it so that you can play those heroes more often. At least that's what it seems. This focus also means that when a new hero is introduced, beginning with Kiriko, we will delay introducing them into competitive modes for a few weeks. This allows us to tune their balance quickly if needed as well as give players time to experiment with them. Also, what this means is that if you don't want to pay for the battle pass, which let me also say really, really quick is like a small side note. The battle pass is $10. So every nine weeks is a new battle pass, but you only need to buy the ones that have new heroes. So that's every 18 weeks. So what's every 18? What is 18 weeks times six chat? What is 18 weeks times six? What is six sets of 18 weeks? How long is that? It's over two years, right? So if you paid $60 for Overwatch out of the gate, 108, that's just over two years, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's just over two years. I'm pretty sure it's just over two years. Overwatch was $40? Original Overwatch was $40? I thought original Overwatch was $60 and then it got knocked down to $40. Am I wrong on that? Also, Overwatch was $40 in 2015 or 2016 it was 40 interesting interesting it was 60 it was 40 original was 60 60 dollars legendary so the legendary edition was 60 that explains it because i remember paying sick paying 60 but it was probably because i had the legendary edition back in the day so that makes sense all right so it was 60 for legendary some people are saying 80 for legendary point being if the game came out today, it would likely be a $60 release, right? So first off, video games have not really changed in price in the last, like, 15 years, which is kind of wild. Um, big flex. Trust me, man. P paying $60 for a video game six years ago is not a flex that you think it is. And if you think that is a flex, I hate to break it to you. Um, anyways. Genuinely, if you only end up buying the, se the seasons that have heroes... Uh, It'll take you two years to spend the $60 that you would have spent on launch. And that's without the free model as well. That's like genuinely, it's hard to not say that's not fair. You know, like, like thinking objectively, if the game came out today and they were like, okay, we want $60 for the game. Fair. Two years of content for 60 bucks. And that's like, you get like it instantly that like, it's really hard to not sit there and go, come on, man. There's no way that's not fair. $10 every 18 weeks? Dude, WoW is like... WoW for a subscription is like is like 10 bucks a month or some shit. And that game fucking gets less content. Like, dude, the WoW players fucking get content one, like at once every four months. And they fucking see they're waiting for it or some shit. Or even longer. There's no way. You can't say that that's not fair. And I... Ref like, listen. I understand if you like really are against it. No problem. I'm not going to disagree with you. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's fine. But to say it's not fair, I just don't... I just can't say it. I can't. In good faith, I can't say it. I don't think it's... I don't, I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but regardless of, sorry, I got off track. Um, because of the shift in approach uh, to heroes, I believe that launching new heroes, or new Overwatch 2 heroes for the Battle Pass system is fair to our players. Okay, now I sound like a fucking chill because this is what came up next. Okay, I promise I didn't read that. Uh, respects the competitive nature of the game. 
and aligns with our goal of supporting Overwatch 2 as a live service moving forward. That's kind of the key is Overwatch is a live service game no matter what now, which is the W. Like, it should have been from the start, but we're there now, so cool. So how exactly do new heroes enter the fray in Overwatch 2? New heroes will deb debut for everyone in Overwatch 2 at tier 55. I wonder if this will be up for, for, for interpretation. Like, like, let's say we get through season 1 and it turns out that tier 55 was way too high. Would they change it? That's, I wonder. Um, well, it, that remains to be seen. On the free track of the Battle Pass, they'll unlock immediately on the premium Battle Pack track. New heroes will typically come out every alternate season, except for season 1 and 2, which will feature a new hero. After that, we are planning a new hero in season 4 and 6. Okay, so follow this model for me, chat. Every 9 weeks. So season 1, season 2. You don't got to worry about buying season 1 because most people here have Overwatch 1. If you don't have Overwatch 1, well, tough luck. Um, going to be a shit out of luck there a little bit. Season 2. That's the first time you spend 10 bucks. Then you spend it again in season 4 and season 6. What is season 4 and season 6 doing every 18 weeks from December what's that like April, May? April, May, somewhere in that range, like I think. I do, that, like honestly that doesn't seem terrible. But um I guess we'll see. 18 weeks is a slower hero release schedule than Overwatch 1. What do you what do you mean? Like original Overwatch 1? Like when it first released? Maybe. Um But that is still way ahead of almost every other game. It's fa it's faster than Apex, it's faster than Valorant, like by a pretty significant amount. So it's hard for me to agree with you. Like Unfortunately, everyone keeps looking back to Overwatch six years ago for answers, and it's like, dude, Overwatch six years ago got abandoned because it wasn't sustainable. So, like, you have to, like, kind of let it go. You know what I mean? Please check Twitter. Sure. Uh, did I miss something? Is it on Play Overwatch's Twitter? What am I looking for? Okay, I got baited. Uh, anyways. Because of the shift in approach here. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Um, alternate season. Okay. There'll be ways to learn, uh, earn heroes introduced in earlier seasons. So this is the big one. This is the big, big one. There will be ways to earn heroes introduced in earlier seasons in future seasons so everyone will have the opportunity to earn these heroes by playing this applies to players who start playing in future seasons and to players who didn't level previous battle passes enough to unlock the hero you will be able to earn heroes from past seasons through special challenges or you can directly acquire them in the shop with overwatch coins that is a third way to deal with it or to, to get old heroes so like if like that doesn't help if you're playing constantly but if you come back after missing a significant amount of time you can catch up kind of quickly anyways continuing on new maps and limited time events uh in addition to the already announced maps for rush 2 circle royale coliseo midtown news queen street and parisu season one will also introduce new push maps to set in portugal Esperaga, um Esperan esperanza esperanza all maps are available to everyone moving forward. A new map will be generated or generally be introduced every alternate season, which is big. We'll also revisit past limited time game modes and welcome new ones as early as season one, which will include the new Wrath of the Bride Junkenstein event. We'll have to, more to share about season one's event soon. So it sounds like it's going to be another um, Junkenstein's type of event or it's spin on it. But who knows? It could actually be sick. Because they are, they have been working on PVE, so I wonder if there's like engines that are built in. I don't know. That, I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, I, that is purely speculation. What's next? As we progress through the seasons together, there are some big moments we look forward to sharing along the way. Overwatch is a big universe with so many possibilities. We already have new core game modes and set of new maps in development. And we plan to launch one of those new modes later in 2023. We are also looking forward to sharing PvE with you in 2023. It's been a continued major focus for our team. We can't wait to share what's upcoming next. We hope that we answered a lot of your questions and can't wait for you to experience Overwatch 2 on October 4th. 
The team has poured our hearts into this experience and we're excited to be on this adventure with you. So, FAQ really fast. Let's blast through this. What's the theme of Overwatch 2 Season 1 Battle Pass? Season 2 1 will feature Cyberpunk theme and include Mythic Genji skin. How can I progress with the Battle Pass? You can progress with the Battle Pass by simply playing the game. Okay, we all know that. Um, what are the in-game challenges and player rewards? It is our intention to make weekly challenges as fun of a, a fun part of Overwatch 2 and not to make anyone feel burdened by completing them. Challenges are in-game missions that you can complete for various rewards, including Battle Pass experience and Overwatch coins. Most challenges will give you experience towards the Battle Pass, and completing through weekly challenges will reward Overwatch coins. So, zooming in on that really quick. Playing to win, win 10 games. Flex your power, win 10 games queued as all rolls. To the victors go, win 20 games of in unranked or competitive play. By the way, um, I don't know if that was mentioned, but that says unranked. Is unranked replacing quick play or is that a new mode? No, oh, that's interesting. I genuinely don't know. Uh, coin line, win seven games of any arcade mode. And then some of the weeklies, uh, complete four weekly challenges, complete eight weekly challenges, complete 11 weekly challenges, and you get 30 coins, 20 coins, and 10 coins. So, kind of W. Reasonable. Uh, what is the content release schedule? Okay, we know that. Um, what are the seasonal experiences in Overwatch? Approximately every time, nine weeks, there will be a new here, new season-themed battle pass, new cosmetics in the shop, and seasonal events for Season 2. Uh, beginning December 6th... Uh, sorry, Season 2 will begin on December 6th and feature a new theme, new hero, and new mythic skin. W. What's happening in limited time game modes? Uh, we'll visit them in the past, uh, but also welcome new ones. So basically, the old ones will still be available, but they're looking to have new ones. Prestige tiers. Prestige tiers will only become available after completing the 80 rewards tier of the battle pass, and they reward unique hero titles that players can equip on their name cards. These rewards take longer to unlock, but they are not offered at every prestige tier. They will only be able to earn you will only be able to earn specific tier titles during the season they are available. Okay, we know that. Um, this is the Overwatch coins thing. Um, basically, the prices for it. So five hundred is five bucks, thousand is ten bucks. Then obviously the bundles twenty two hundred, fifty seven hundred. 11,600. I think this is like Apex to a T. I think like the numbers are even the same. Uh, can I use my Overwatch credit or can I use my Overwatch credits in Overwatch 2? Original Overwatch credits will carry over to Overwatch 2 for players to use in the hero gallery on core launch cosmetics for new heroes. For example, each of the Kiriko, Junker Queen, and Sojourn have two legendary, one epic, and a few rare skins available to purchase with either credits or new coins. In addition, Additional Overwatch credits can be used to buy other always available items in the hero gallery for the original 32 original heroes and some launch items in the cosmetic classes. For example, five new weapon charms. So if you have credits, you'll be able to use them on the two legendary, one epic, and some rare skins for Kiriko, Queen, and Sojourn as long as you have everything else. So, W. What's happening to Overwatch Legacy content? Uh, seasonal content delivered through previous events like season, Summer Games and Lunar New Year. Lunar New Year will be made in, available in Overwatch Coins. Or made available for Overwatch Coins and non-seasonal Legacy. Okay. Where can I use my Overwatch League toy, Coins? It's the same. How do I get new heroes in Overwatch 2? So you can either buy like get the, buy the Battle Pass, get it unlocked. Uh, or get it Tier 55 in the free Battle Pass. Or you can grind coins and buy the Battle Pass every other season. Or you can get them um, the next season by completing a challenge. So there's four ways to get the new heroes. You buy the, the battle pass right away, and you get it. Number two is the free battle pass level to 55. Number three is by buying the battle pass by using the coins you grinded from dailies slash weeklies um, every other season. And number four is you get them by completing the challenge the next season for the previous season's hero. So there's four ways to unlock the characters. Honestly, it's really I think it's really hard to argue. Like like to be fair, like if in a perfect world it shouldn't, like they shouldn't be locked behind the paywall at all. Uh, but they made it very fair. It, it's pretty fair. Like it's it's a good compromise. I'm okay with the compromise. Like I'm okay with it. Uh, are there any free heroes for current Overwatch players? So you get Queen and Sojourn for free um, for logging into Overwatch Town during Season 1, and Kiriko will be included for all Overwatch 1 owners. 
Uh, will new heroes immediately join competitive modes? No. Um, we plan to debut Kiriko into a competitive play after the first two weeks of season, season one. So, Kiriko won't be unlocked and ranked till two weeks in. Uh, how do I lock future or heroes in the future seasons? Okay, we got that already. It's by playing the challenges. If I do not have yet have the new heroes their way, I can try them. There are many places you can try using new heroes that have not yet unlocked. For example, all... Wait a minute. This is huge. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. Why is this not stated? There are many places where you can use play using new heroes that they have not been unlocked. For example, all heroes are automatically playable in the practice range, custom games, no limits, mystery heroes, mystery deathmatch, and other select game modes, as well as some special game events? That's wild. Uh, when a season features a new map, will that map also be part of the battle pass? No maps will be available to all players. Um, will you make balance changes at the beginning of every season? No, if we find changes... Wait. Change, will you make balance ch changes at the beginning of the new season? No, if we find changes are needed urgently to address balance, we can make them outside of that time frame. Oh, will you only make balance changes? Okay, so they'll make it otherwise, but yeah. Holy shit. Chat, this is a lot of stuff. 